Hi guys, in this video I'm going to attempt to give a very fundamental understanding of what probability is, why we need it, and some very uh, elementary concepts that will help us to kind of continue in this series of probability. Okay, so probability arises from the human being's need to understand his surrounding, uh, the universe, okay? And in studying his surrounding, he notices that a phenomenon, whether internal to himself or external in the outside environment, um, are uncertain, uh, don't necessarily occur one way or another, but at best are uncertain. So whether we're studying something as simple as flipping a coin, where either heads or tails can result, rolling a six-sided die, picking a card out of a 52-card deck, trying to predict the weather tomorrow or next week, trying to predict the future value of a uh, security like a stock or a bond, um, real estate prices, so in economics this comes up a lot, in sociology trying to predict uh, behaviors of, gr of groups of people, trying to, uh, in, in medicine, uh, how long will the patient survive, uh, how likely is it the patient will live past uh, six months uh, after being diagnosed with a certain ailment. These are all examples of different fields and the phenomenon of uncertainty. So we're going to call this um, phenomenon of uncertainty uh, chance experiment. Okay, so all those examples were you can be looked at as chance experiments. Okay, and let me uh, let me at least uh, say what uh, give you a good definition of what of what a chance experiment might be like. Any situation where there is uncertainty about which of two or more possible outcomes will result. Okay, so important word, uh, many important terms in there, of course, but outcome. Okay, so an outcome is a possible um, realization of a chance experiment. I don't want to use uh, outcome in its own definition, but it's important to, to also get this term clearly out there. So a chance experiment is any situation where there is uncertainty about which of two or more possible outcomes will result. So in flipping a coin, we have um, the situation where we can get a heads or a tails, so that's a chance experiment. We can roll a six-sided die, like in many board games. So in that situation, there's six possible outcomes, okay? And we don't know which one's going to happen, okay? So uh, these are very elementary textbook examples that uh, once we kind of can handle these and understand how they work, we can then conceive of much more interesting and, and complex phenomenon in the real world, like trying to predict the weather, and so on, okay? Um, so to build a framework around trying to tackle, uh, to learn about chance experiments, um, to say a little more than just that they're, they're, we don't know what the uh, outcome is going to be, we're going to introduce some more terminology. So let's start with a very important concept, uh, the concept of a sample space. sample space. Uh, we use typically use the capital letter S to denote a sample space. And all a sample space is is a collect is a collection of all possible outcomes of a chance experiment. So if we stick with our exam uh, one of our examples from up here, let me choose this guy here. He's a little more interesting. If my chance experiment is the very classical rolling of a six-sided die, then there's obviously six possible outcomes. So the sample space, so 
is equal to, and I use squiggly brackets to indicate a set, okay? One is one possible outcome, two is another possible outcome, three, four, five, and six. These are all the possible outcomes of this chance experiment, okay? And so that's the sample space, okay? Next, to a notion that comes naturally once we've understood what a sample space is, is the notion of an event. Okay, first a little on notation. Events, we're going to define them with capital letters like A, B, C, E, F, G. And um, oftentimes you'll see subscripting as well when there's many events and we run out of letters. Typically we try to stay away from X, Y, Z as those are kind of in mathematics uh, serve for other purposes. But this is simply convention and notation. So these are typical, uh, notice they're all capitals as well, uh, ways to define an event. But what is an event? That's more important. An event is any subset of the sample space. Okay? so. If the outcome of the experiment, so if the outcome of the chance experiment is contained in the event, then we can say that that event has occurred. Okay. In order to see this more clearly, let's do an example. So, let's stick with flipping the uh, uh, sorry, rolling the die. Let me define an event A to be the event of rolling a odd number. So let me list all, in set notation, all the possible outcomes that satisfy my definition of event A, which is rolling an odd number. So obviously one would, the outcome of rolling one would satisfy uh, event A, three and five. So those three outcomes satisfy the my definition of event A which is rolling an odd number okay now let's think of that so I, I have the die in my hand I'm about to conduct this chance experiment I know that this there's six possible outcomes okay so I roll the die and it turns out that I rolled a three okay so since three is contained in the event A right here then I can say that event A has occurred likewise if I rolled a 1 I could say event A had occurred if I roll a 5 I could say event A has occurred but if I roll a 2 or a 4 or a 6 I, can, uh, I can't say event A has occurred I can say event A has not occurred though Okay. Okay, let's make another event. How about the event of rolling a um, number larger than three? So four, five, six. So I've defined event B as rolling a, num uh, a, a number larger than three. So outcomes four, five, and six are the three possible outcomes for event B. So if I actually roll the die and I get a 5, then I can say event B has occurred. Likewise, event A has occurred if I roll a die, right? So both A and B have occurred. Okay. So you see there's already, in this example, there's an overlap between these two. So again, let me say, I roll the die, I get a 5. <clears throat> so. I can say B has occurred and if I look at A 5 is odd right so A has occurred as well so events can overlap each other as well sometimes they do and sometimes they don't we'll have a term for this uh, okay uh, shortly and we'll also go into a lot more depth but let me show you as a kind of foreshadowing of what's to come we can use a Venn diagram and you could think of this entire box as representing all the possible outcomes of the 
experiment, which is the sample space. So there's S. And here was event A. So 1, 3, 5. You could, this is a visual way to understand this. And if I were to draw event B and be kind of as truthful as I can to the relationship between A and B, I would have to let B overlap with A a little bit at least. And this overlap, if you think of it, is the event the outcome that these two events share in common, which was event which was outcome five. Right? If they didn't share anything in common, I would have drawn B quite disjoint from A. Okay, but here there's clearly an overlap, and the overlap arises because um, I know that they both have outcome five in common. Okay, so this is just a bit of foreshadowing of what's to come. I hope this was uh, uh, helpful in setting up a real kind of basic elementary groundwork for what we're going to do in part two, which is going to complements, unions, intersections, and disjoint mutually exclusive events. All right, so. Keep watching. Till next time, have a great day.